like a lot of Australians, I think I was not just disappointed, but actually shocked by the attitude of Julia Gillard and her government, and many of the senior members of her government, to Julian Assange and the major WikiLeaks release of 250,000 documents that started in 2010. It was an emotive response to a number of factors, one of which being that those leaks that happened around that time, that, that were published a few days before she made those comments, they were the ones that named Mark Arbib as an informer, an insider who informed on the workings of our government to a foreign power. It might be an ally, but it's still a foreign power. And you don't do that. You don't tell a foreign power what's going on inside your own government. Imagine that the other way around. Imagine if Australian intelligence had been receiving information about internal workings of Obama's government and sending it back to Canberra. This would have been, you can imagine the reaction of that in the US. Because there was virtually no reaction to that, illustrates the whole servant-master relationship, post-colonial relationship, or neo-colonial relationship that we have with the United States. We are the willing deputy sheriff. And nothing has illustrated that more than the reaction Julia Gillard had when she claimed, completely wrongly, and the woman's a lawyer for God's sake, that Julian Assange was in breach of the law and what he had done something illegal. And then it was put to the federal police, and what did they say? No, he hasn't broken any law. Ten days later, the humiliating news came out that he had not broken any law, even though she said he had. The other thing that was really terrible at that time was the then Attorney General, McClelland, said that they would examine the state of his passport, as though he might not be allowed back into Australia. A last refuge, one would have thought, if the forces of authority are hunting him throughout the world. What does the Australian government do? It says we'll examine his passport to see if he can be kept out. The last person they did something like that to was Wilfred Burchard. So, presumably they see Assange in his own way as as dangerous as Burchard, who was, you know, the last thing we had as a, a real renegade journalist who didn't take the government's orders and reported as he wished. But that was decades ago. So is Assange the, the new um, bête noire of the Australian government? Presumably he is. My feeling about Julian Assange is that he should be celebrated. He is someone who has gone off in pursuit of truth. That's all. He's gone off, in, he, he's like Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers, which showed the dark side of the Vietnam War, was all a dark side, really. And Assange, what he's been trying to do is to get papers which will show the unseen side of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, from a journalistic point of view, you have to remember that these wars have not been reported. They have gone unreported. Why is that? The last wars that were really reported in any way objectively, the last one was Vietnam, where reporters were on the ground as free agents and could report what they saw, and many of them, you know, a number of them died in that process, but they, they got the news out as they saw it. In Iraq and Afghanistan, reporters are embedded, and they spout the line of whoever embeds them with their troops. They see the war from the perspective of the people who are giving them safety and comfort, and that they're better down with. This is not the way that journalists should operate, and is not the way that the public will ever learn the truth. So we have to accept that we are not getting information about those wars. The French theoretician Jean Baudrillard spoke of the first Gulf War and said it was an electronic confection put on almost as a form of entertainment and that through it you could not, no longer contact or touch the reality of war. Iraq and Afghanistan are the same and the major powers are stage managing their conflicts now so that the public back home never worry about them and turn off the news and turn on the Simpsons. The problem is someone like Julian Assange comes along and through uh, releasing all sorts of government information shows what the facts actually are. And the true danger is that the public may learn them. That's why they're so terrified of him. What is the attitude of the Australian government when a citizen who has only brought material to light 
that was volunteered to his website anonymously, what is their attitude? Take away his passport. Say that he's done illegal acts. What does that, what does that really construe? That says he's a criminal. He's none of those things. He's a journalist and a publisher, and that's all he's done. And for the things that he's done, we should be awarding him the AM, the AO. He should be Australian of the Year. That's the kind of person that he is. This government has betrayed a person whose only crime is to publish the truth. No one says that these cables aren't correct. They're authentic documents. So what is it? And uh, is, is Julian Assange accused of stealing them? No, he's not. So what is his crime? In any country, even the Americans would find it hard to make that stick. So from my point of view, it's the worst performance, one of the worst performances of this government, but it's the one which has really sapped faith of anybody on the progressive side of politics in the shell of what was mm -hmm. the Labor Party. Yeah. If they are going to suck on this level, God knows what Mark Latham would say about them. <laughs>